Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of the Daily Dose of Hope. I am Chaplain Bob, and you're watching the Daily Dose of Hope. Thanks so much for being here. We are actually going to do something that we just did a couple weeks ago for Canada, and I'll start with that. Uh, as you may or may not have heard, uh, Canada a couple days ago, um, I think it was two days ago, they lifted their Emergency Powers Act, which in essence gave uh, their their prime minister the power of a dictator. So they lifted that two days ago, so there is no Emergency Powers Act. So for the time being, the Canadians at least have a democracy. The, the real question is, is how long uh, will that stay that way? But we do want to praise the Lord because he did hear millions of prayers all over the planet praying for Canada. Well, tonight, we're here together at the Daily Dose of Hope praying for our friends, uh, our fellow human beings that call themselves Ukrainians. And the Ukraine uh, people are a proud people. They've been free since 1991 when they received their independence from the old Soviet Union. And uh, just yesterday, the uh, president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, has decided to declare war on Ukraine. Now, this is not something new. This has been something that's been uh, being talked about since the beginning of February, end of January, actually. And so people have known this was coming. And I guess from what I've read is the U Ukrainian people knew this was coming for years. So we have a full-on war in Ukraine. And so people are getting uh, out. Some people are leaving. Some people are scared to death and they're, you know, they're, they're trying to get out of the country and some people are staying. And I actually have a um, person that's on my timeline. I should have had this up ahead of time. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. But one of my uh, Facebook friends, who's also a former uh, supporter of, of our ministry, and I was with a different ministry with, when I was with a different organization called First Love International. That's who I was with uh, in my first go around as a missionary. Um, well, he has actually posted something from a Ukrainian missionary, an American Ukrainian missionary, who is still in Ukraine. So I'm trying to find that. If you give me a minute here, um, may be able to find this easy. Can't. I thought it was worth possibly reading to you because uh, it, was, it was quite chilling on what they were talking about. And um, a lot of people don't understand what's going on over there. They think that um, somehow there's this bad blood between Russia and Ukraine. What you have to know is that half of Ukraine is Russian-speaking. The other half is Ukrainian-speaking. Uh, the country was, I don't know, 50 years or so uh, under communist rule. And... Um, I don't know, maybe 40 years under communist rule. And so there is about half of the population believes that they are have allegiance to Russia. The other half, of course, has patriotic uh, allegiance to Ukraine. So it's, a, it's an interesting situation, but nonetheless, we don't want people to die. We don't want people to uh, be beat up and maimed because of this. So we're going to pray. And that's the best thing we can do. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was in a, um, in a class that I take, and um, the teacher, the professor, who's also a pastor, said, you know, when you're, we were talking in the context of dealing with demons, and, you know, he was talking about demon possession and what do you do when somebody's demon-possessed. 
Um, and, you know, he, the Bible's clear that it doesn't say that we, as uh, the church age Christians, should be speaking to demons. But instead, he said we should be actually praying, praying, praying. And when we pray, God hears our prayer. As long as it lines up with his will, he hears our prayer. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm, I'm not coming up with uh, what I wanted to read to you. Uh, shame. Maybe I can find it one more spot if you just give me a minute here. Cannot find it. We'll just have to go without it. That's okay. I think, I think we'll be okay without it. Try just stick with me here. By the way, that was the Ukrainian national anthem that I played at the very beginning. We'll continue to pray God for the best outcome. Boy, oh boy, I have a hard time. And post. Maybe I'll think of it as we go along. Anyways, let's go ahead and open uh, our Bibles. We're not going to be in Psalm 6, 8 to 10 that it says on the screen over here. We're actually going to be here. Let me go to the first page. We're going to be in Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17, verse 14. And again, I'm just calling this prayer for Ukraine. And in Proverbs, this is the Holman Christian Study Bible. Proverbs 17, 14. It says, to start a conflict is to release a flood. Stop the dispute before it breaks out. So what's happened is basically, uh, if, you, if you get away from all the propaganda, there's a lot of propaganda that's going on. The West is actually causing a lot of propaganda. As you know, I don't, I don't watch any news. I definitely don't watch local news. I don't watch any of the major legacy media groups anymore. I don't watch CNN. I don't watch any of those groups um, because most of them are spewing uh, misinformation or lies. But if you know the truth behind this, Russia has for years been worried that Ukraine would join NATO. NATO is a, an agreement between European nations and the United States to protect each other against the, run, the once Soviet Union. And um, so Russia has been saying uh, Ukraine cannot join NATO. If Ukraine joins NATO, then NATO is going to invade Russia. So this is kind of how this whole thing started a few years back. It's not something this started a few weeks ago. It started a few years back. So we are saying here in Proverbs seventeen fourteen to start a conflict is like you're releasing a flood. And the Bible says here in Proverbs 17, 14, stop the dispute before the flood breaks out. Okay, It's just words. As you know, the, the book of Proverbs is words of wisdom. So let's pray. I've got a little prayer card here for us. And we're going to just ask God, we're going to ask the Lord to hear the prayer for the Ukrainians or of the Ukrainians. The first one on there is we're going to pray for the perfect protection of the civilians, the innocent civilians, people that are just trying to live um, and trying to live in their own country and go to work and have a normal life. We're going to pray for those civilians. We're also going to pray for a ray of hope. We're going to, we're going to pray that hope um, somehow uh, is all over Ukraine. And then we're going to pray also for the people to remember, call out to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's so, so important. So let's bow our heads. Lord God, mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a mighty and powerful God. We praise your holy name. We want to pray right now, Lord, for you to intervene in this conflict between Russia and Ukraine, Lord. And specifically, we're praying for the people the innocent civilians to have protection and safety right now. The people that are not involved in the military, the people that are not involved in government, just the average Ukrainian, Lord, we pray for their safety and their protection right now. Lord, we also want to pray for a ray of hope. 
We pray, Lord, just like you did with the rainbow. At the end of that rainbow, there is safety, there's protection, there's hope. And we know that hope is one of those things. Uh, it's the reason that we call ourselves Hope Heals International Ministry. We know that hope is always at the end of that sin or at the end of that conflict, the end, end of that storm that we face. And so we pray for a ray of hope to quickly come across the country of Ukraine. Lord, we also want to pray for everybody in the, U in the Ukraine right now to remember and turn to you, Lord, right now, to your Son, Jesus Christ, right now, Lord. We pray, Lord, that in this time of desperation, those that you're calling right now would turn to you and they would repent and they would become believers in your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. And those that are already believers, Lord, I pray that you would hear their prayers right now, the specific things that they're praying to you. We love you, Lord, and we pray all of this in Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name. Amen. Now I have another verse for us. This one is in Psalm 27, verse 3. And you may remember this one. I used it a couple weeks ago when we were praying for Canada. And it says, Though an army deploys against me, my heart is not afraid. Though a war breaks out against me, still I am confident. Now, there's no doubt in my mind this is, a, this is a psalm of David. And he says, Though an army deploys against me, and that's what's happening in Ukraine right now, there are Russian troops in Ukraine, there are Russian uh, tanks moving into the big cities. Though an army deploys against me, my heart is not afraid. Though a war breaks out against me, still I am afraid. Confident. This is Psalm 27, 3. Let's pray. I've got a prayer card, second prayer card. In this one, we're going to be praying for the Ukrainian armed forces. Those that are the one million reserved armed forces and several hundred thousand enlisted, we're going to pray for them specifically. The first thing that we're going to pray for them is for wisdom on how to defend their land. We pray for, we're going to pray for all the generals and all the leaders of the armed forces. A second thing that we're going to pray for is we're going to pray for God's favor for all of the Ukrainian military and armed forces. And the third thing we're going to do is we're going to pray for the armed forces to remember and call out to the Lord Jesus Christ during this time. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, Mighty Father, again, we praise your holy name. We know you're a God uh, that listens. A few weeks ago, we were praying for Canada, and just a couple days ago, Canada dropped their uh, dictatorship, Lord, and they restored their constitution, Lord. Thank you, and we praise you for that. We want to pray, Lord, right now for the Ukrainian armed forces. And we want to pray right now for wisdom. We want to pray for your wisdom, for the leaders, the generals, uh, all those that are in charge of the military in Ukraine, that they, they would have um, your power, your understanding, your wisdom on how to actually defend their own country, their own land. Lord, we also want to pray for favor for all of the Ukrainian armed forces right now. We pray for favor that they would be protected against... Um, the bombs and the missiles and the bullets that will be flying from the Russians into Ukraine. We want to pray for favor, Lord, that no one, that there are not heavy casualties, Lord. And we want to pray certainly that there is favor for those that are trying to defend their own freedom and country. Lord, we also want to pray for your... Um, uh, your power to come upon each member of the armed forces that they would remember and they would turn to you, Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ, right now, and that they would repent of their sins and that they would become believers in your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. During this time of calamity, during this time of un uneasiness, during this time of war, Lord, I pray that these armed forces would turn back to you. 
and your Son, Jesus Christ. And we pray all of this in Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name. Amen. Now, I will say this. I don't know all the details of what's going on over there. Uh, perhaps tomorrow at Hope Hill's Sunday morning gathering, I'll find the um, I'll find what I was going to read to you from a missionary that uh, is part of First Love International, and she has chosen to stay in Ukraine. Um, she trusts God more than she trusts the government, and uh, she asked for a few things, a few ways that we could be praying. So I'll hopefully I'll find that tonight. And I'll share that with you in the morning at Hope Hill's Sunday morning gathering. But one thing I will say, without knowing much about this situation, I do know that the world is a, a difficult place today. Uh, it's a difficult place. We're, um, we're getting past the, the virus issue and um, all the variants and all that. And our countries are all coming out of that great but yet government's still hanging on to power somehow, some way. And then on top of that, we have issues with freedom in Canada, freedom issues in Australia, freedom issues in New Zealand. And um, it's just, uh, it just seems like the world and high inflation in the U.S., um, a possible recession in the U.S., which will affect the rest of the world. So... We're just asking the Lord to consider all of our prayers. And during these times that are like this, that's the best thing that you can be doing is praying, praying, praying. Now, if you're a protester and you like to protest the government and you live in a free place where you can do that, then we encourage you to do that in a prayerful manner. Always pray before you do those things. And um, I will say this. I will be back here tomorrow at Hope Hill's Sunday morning gathering, bright and early. We want to invite you to be here at 10 a.m. We'll have a brand new message for you. And thank you so much for being here. If you look down here below me, I'm going to put the link to YouTube. I'm going to put the link to Rumble. Please go to YouTube and Rumble and subscribe. We need subscribers. We would greatly appreciate that if you would do that. And then down below here, we're going to have our Facebook page for the Daily Dose of Hope. Please go to the Daily Dose of Hope uh, Facebook page, uh, like it, and follow us on that page. And then if you like uh, the page, the Facebook page, go over to the Daily Dose of Hope uh, um, group. We actually have a group, and that's where people can post things. They can put prayer requests up. We had one of our uh, faithful um, listeners who is on the Daily Dose of Hope daily. Her name is Karen. She went over there and posted something for praying for Ukraine. So I encourage you to get over to the Facebook uh, group called The Daily Dose of Hope and um, just press that uh, little key there and uh, I'll approve uh, everybody that goes through unless you have some uh, weird reason that I shouldn't do that. Anyways, God bless all of you. I'm going to pray. I'm going to play the um, national anthem of Ukraine as we say our goodbyes. God bless all of you. And here is, oh, I guess I got rid of it already. I am not on top of things tonight. I already got rid of the YouTube uh, national anthem for Ukraine. So I'll just pray, I'll, I'll play a good song that we always like, which is our uh, favorite New Orleans sounds. God bless you all. See you tomorrow at Hope Heals. Sunday morning gathering. Bye-bye.